tradition in its broadest sense refers to the conventions literary techniques and habits of expression passed down to a writer from the pen it encompasses various aspects such as specific devices literary forms or even cultural influences when we speak of tradition in its most significant and honorable sense we are referring to the essential line of development that emerges from the past the main current rather than the incidental element in the context of literary history the tradition is often linked to a written river and the historian traces its course from its origin to the present the writer who actively seeks to understand and master the past to relate it to the present and to find solutions to current problems in line with past achievements is considered traditional in the best sense however blindly imitating the past can only lead to the creation of work that are merely period pieces without any real connection to the present or the past beyond their outward appearance T.S. Eliot shed light on the concept of tradition and its significance in his renowned essays, Tradition and the Individual Tenant and Dr. St. Paul. We can examine his understanding of tradition under three main aspects. His perspective on tradition itself, the relationship between the writer and tradition, and the role of the critic in relation to tradition. Eliot's main goal in his poetry was to find a sense of detachment or impersonality. which he referred to in his essay tradition and the individual tenant he believed that poets should strive to move away from personal emotions and instead connect with the broader tradition of european literature eliot saw this idea of tradition as a part of his impersonal theory of art however when eliot spoke of tradition he didn't mean blindly following what had been done in the past he didn't have a nostalgic view of history Instead, he emphasized that social and religious institutions serve as a means to pass on eternal values from one generation to another. Tradition and individual talent. The essay "Tradition and the Individual Talent" was first published in the Equus 1990. The essay consists of three parts. Eliot's take up the problem of tradition explains the relation of the poem to other poems by other authors. In the second part he touches on the problem of personality and art explaining the relation of the poem to its author the third part is merely a gist in few lines of what has been discussed in the first two tradition a new conception of tradition according to eliot tradition is a matter of word of much wider significance it cannot be inherited on if, if you want you must obtain it by great labor the relation of the poet to the past Eliot proceeds to a more intelligible exposition of the relation of the poet to the past. The poet can neither take the past as a lump, as in discriminate mass, nor he can himself wholly or two private admirations, nor can be form himself wholly upon the one preferred period. The second part: personality and poetic expression. In this part, Eliot takes up the theme at which he ended part one: this despairization and poetic expression. The mind of the poet is a shred of platinum; it may partly or exclusively operate upon the experience of the man himself. But the more perfect the artist, the more completely separate in him will be the man who suffers and the mind who creates. The more perfectly he will the mind digest. and transmute the passions which are its material so the mind or the personality of a poet is that transforming catalyst and material and elements which entered the presence of this catalyst are two kinds emotions and feelings in eliot view it is not the greatness the tendency of intensity of the emotion the components but that intensity of the artistic process the pressure so to speak under which the fusion takes place that comes Connection between writer and tradition. T. S. Eliot initiates with the assertion that the relation between the two is subtle and complex. It could vary from writer to writer, but two points would remain obvious. First, the language used by a writer is is inherited from his predecessors. He doesn't start from scratch. He simply follows tradition. Eliot said, "Quote." We shall often find that not only the best but the most individual parts of his work may be those in which the dead poets, his ancestors, assert their immortality most vigorously. Unquote. 
What the writer creates orally or by writing, it will always be inspired from what he has heard or read in works that have already been created before him. The second point, writers cannot simply rely on their inherited tradition. They must modify it. Tradition is the result of successful experimentation, Ashley Dukes pointed out. Eliot rejects the notion of blindly following the previous generation's ways or timidly adhering to their successes. If writers use inherited forms without modification based on new perceptions, those forms lose their original sharpness and become cliches or unreasonable compliance. The relation between tradition and the present involves a tension between these two principles is the un inescapable sense of the past and the need to connect the inherited past with the present. Eliot emphasizes that a traditional writer not only embodies the spirit of their own generation, but also possesses a deep understanding of the past. To be conscious of the past and the present, the poet should absorb knowledge in a similar manner to how Shakespeare learned history from Plutarch. Although art never improves, the material of art is never quite the same. The Critic and the Tradition According to T.S. Eliot, the critic's role is to serve as a guardian of literary tradition because tradition is essential for them to effectively carry out their duties. Eliot emphasizes that it is the critic's responsibility to preserve tradition, particularly when there is a strong and valuable tradition in place. The critic should have a comprehensive and steady understanding of lit literature as a whole. Eliot asserts that no poet or artist can be fully understood or appreciated in isolation. Their significance and appreciation stem from their connection to previous poets and artists. To evaluate a poet or artist, one must place them in the context of the past allowing for contrast and comparison with those who came before. Literature is considered a living entity, and each new work of art has the potential to modify the existing order and relationships among works. The proportions, values, and relations of each work to the whole are readjusted, establishing a conformity between the old and the new. To properly carry out the task of evaluating writers and their works, critics require knowledge of tradition. The past provides them with a pattern and standard, enabling them to employ their main methods of analysis and comparison effectively. Eliot quotes, The important critic is the person who is absorbed in the present problems of art and who wishes to bring the forces of the past to bear upon the solution of these problems. The critic's function is to contribute to achieving a genuine balance between the past, present, and future in literature. In relation to tradition, Eliot identifies three tasks for the critic. Firstly, the critic should use the past as a measure and judge of the present. Secondly, they should employ the past to aid in the authentic development of the present. Lastly, the critic should assist in reorganizing our overall understanding and perspective of the entire literary tradition. To conclude, the critic's tasks include measuring and judging the present against the past, aiding the authentic development of the present, and helping to reorganize our understanding of the entire literary tradition. The closer the critic adheres to these idols, the more effective their criticism will be.